started tonight, we have a rather heavy agenda. Welcome everyone to our October 15th Board of Education meeting. I'd like to call this meeting to order and start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the United, United, United States of America, to the Republic, which stands, a nation, visible, liberty, justice for all. Okay, thank you. Uh, next order of business is to adopt the uh, uh, the agenda, the amended agenda. Everyone should have a copy of it with the changes in So we would like Oh, okay. Okay. Kind of just push everything down so Jacob could register. Okay, we can do that. Any other changes we want to make to the amended agenda? No, no. Okay. Can I have a motion to adopt the amended agenda? So moved. Second. Any more discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstain? Motion passes. One, two, three. Five, I guess we have tonight, right? Okay. Um, I'd like to mention, um, next we have community input. We'd like to try something a little different this week, and we have a sign-in sheet up front. Um, we're not always able to answer all your questions, so if you would like a response to any questions you have, please sign the sheet up front or give us your contact information anyway. Okay. Uh, do we have any community input tonight? Seeing none, we're going to move on to our next item of business, and that we're going to um, have our board candidates um, give us a little bit of background on themselves. Um, we are filling a seat vacated by Walker Reynolds. Walker had to resign. He moved out of town. Um, we're going to fill the position. We're going to appoint someone by the board. We've had five people come forward, and we really appreciate those folks stay coming forward. We have their candidate summary, but we'd like to have those people who are interested in being a board at least introduce themselves and, and just in a couple minutes add any additional information they'd like to or any color to their to the resume about who they are or, or what they w would like to do on the board. So I'd like to keep that pretty brief. We only have, I think, a few minutes on the agenda for that, just two or three minutes. Introduce yourself and add any information you'd like to. Um, we do have the microphones, and if you could take the microphone for that so we can make sure everybody at home can hear you as well as people in the room. So who would like to go first? Okay, good. Thank you. Just introduce yourself in just a couple minutes. Well, now, now it's on, right? Uh, good evening. Um, my name is Tony Lombardo. Uh, I've been living here in the school district for about 12 years now with my wife, Melody, and my daughter, Bailey, who is a sixth grader here in the middle school. Uh, my wife works uh, for the town. Um, before I came here, uh, I guess I'll just tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I worked at IBM for 18 years. I worked uh, all over the country for them. Ended up coming here to Ithaca, started working at Cornell. I was there for about 13 years, and now I work at uh, Seaboard. Um, my main interest was when I saw the email that they were looking for somebody, I felt like uh, it would be an opportunity for me to, to give back and get involved and find out a little bit more about what's going on here at the school. Um, I'm happy to help in any way that I can. If there's committees that need to be served on or uh, any work that needs to be done, I've been out reviewing some of the information that's out there on the, the Board of Education website, which is excellent, by the way. There's a lot of good information out there. So, um, you know, I'm happy to help out in any way I can. And I think that's it, unless anybody has any questions for me. Okay. Thank you, Tony. Perfect. Who wants to go next? 
Hi, everybody. I'm Tori Jacobs. I have been in the community now for about four years, but I did grow up in Ithaca, New York. Um, I went through uh, elementary school, middle school, and high school there. I've got two daughters that now attend uh, Lansing. Uh, they are in first grade and also in third grade. Um, they are very, very different, as my mother told me. Both children will be different. Um, I work at Cornell University. I am a registrar there. Um, I'm also a senior associate director of an advising office um, in the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences. So I have a pretty extensive background in higher education. Um, I was also a preschool and after school teacher when I started out, um, and that was in Vermont uh, in a small school uh, outside of Burlington. I received this uh, email that there was an opening and that seemed really interesting. My uh, supervisor is the vice president of a board um, uh, outside of Lansing and I talked to her frequently about her interactions um, and everything that she's learned from being on the board of education there. Um, I also talked to the Karen and she just really excited mm -hmm. me about everything that was going on. Um, so I guess that's it unless there's any questions. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well, um, I'm Virginia Mansfield Richardson. Um, I have I ran for the board and lost, so I say that uh, with pride because I think anytime somebody is interested enough to run and going through losing that it, and still wanting to come back and be on it, it shows, you know, that you're civic-minded. Um, and I'm glad that I wish that there could be three seats on the board. Um, I'm uh, I have four children in the school district. In the second grade, the sixth grade, the seventh grade, and in ninth grade. So one in the elementary school, two in the middle, and <laughs> I'm smiling at all the teachers and the <laughs> superintendent, all the people I know. Um, <clears throat> and we also had a nephew who was our legal guardian who was in the school district for a year. Um, I'm the associate dean of the Park School Communications at Ithaca College. My husband and I have been in the, uh, have lived here for 14 years. And uh, I think it's a wonderful community. I think you all do a great job. <coughs> Um, I was a reporter at the Washington Post for 12 years, so I covered a lot of school boards. I know how difficult they can be, um, lots of difficult decisions. So I think that's all I have to say. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Virginia. Sure. I know we have two other candidates. I know Ken Cutler wasn't able to make it. I don't know if Kurt Gooch can make it either, but um, if not, we'll have to, I guess, proceed without without their input. Um, unfortunately, we only have one opening, and looking at your applications, I think you all are well qualified. So I thank you for stepping up in our time in need. And please, if you're not selected, please take no offense to it. Um, we do have plenty of opportunities to help out, and we have an election coming up in May, and we will have three seats available. So we would love to have all of you back. Uh, to run for election again. It's going to be a real difficult process for us to try to sort out who to pick. This term is a short term. It runs from the appointment until the election, basically. So it's a nice opportunity to try it out. But on the other hand, it um, won't be long before there's another opportunity to, to come on the board. So um, thank you. Anything to add, Mr. Superintendent? Uh, uh, just to, to really thank you. I really appreciate it. We're, oh, as we, every day that we did receive a new applicant, we were excited and uh, appreciate the community input. And we do have some other avenues um, for you to explore that I will email you personally with to see if that you'd have any interest in that. We're doing community forums. We're going to be doing some, some things that I can really use assistance with. Um, so if you're interested and if you don't fill this seat, uh, I will send you a personal email for them. So again, thank you very much. Yeah, the process we're going to follow is um, we have your everyone's application. Um, at the end of the meeting, we're going to go into executive session, talk among ourselves about um, the candidates and if we have enough information to make a decision. And then we may come back and have a vote if people feel we have enough information and select a candidate. The vote will be in public. Um, but we want to make sure everyone's comfortable. They have the information they need. Um, if we're not comfortable, we will delay it until we get the information people want. So. We may or may not vote at the end of this meeting, so
please don't feel obliged to stay if you have other obligations, but obligations, but we'd love to have you stay if you, you can. Great. Okay? Fair enough? Good. So thank you all for coming, and thanks thank again you. for coming forward. Um, our next order of business is communication, starting with our superintendent's report. Uh, oh, he'll I'm, be no, he's at the number in seven. presentations. He went from 7C to 7A. You know, and I'm, there's a great deal that I'll be doing there in presentations, so I'll, I'll keep this brief. I just want to talk to, little, to you a little bit about um, the Common Core implementation that we're uh, really uh, engaged in heavily right now in the district. And um, I know uh, you may have seen today's, the paper today with a picture of John King. He's starting to get a lot of heat for this. And, um, and it's not, it doesn't seem to be, people aren't questioning necessarily the Common Core, but the rate at which it's being laid out for us to implement uh, without having the resources or the training and um, so there's a lot happening there but one of the the latest things that's coming out and about is that there were uh, PTA uh, town talks that he was going to be doing and there's so much emotion around this that during this town talk uh, it ended up being counterproductive so he has canceled all of the town talks um, so I, I f and I, I know Mr. Thomas will speak to his, he had a uh, community forum uh, regarding math specifically and I've heard great feedback. So hopefully one of the things that you'll see coming from your Board of Education, your administrators and myself in the next few months are parent meetings just to continue to talk to you and inform you about the Common Core, about how, what we're doing as a f uh, instructional faculty and how we're trying to um, really uh, support this and support the students because there's a, um, really the standards have been, been raised uh, all at once. So there's gaps there and students are having to do more to, to keep up. And some students really feel it emotionally when they aren't, they're not getting the grade that they're typically used to getting. And, and so these are all the areas that we're trying to make sure that we support a student's emotional well-being through this transition. Uh, teachers' emotional well-being through this transition, as well as our faculty and staff. So, I, the the message that we're trying to get out is that this is definitely going to be a community endeavor for all of us together to to be um, implementing it. If we're going to do it well, and one of the things that I appreciate earlier bef before we had a board meeting, we had a um, new employee recognition. Is our third grade teacher where a lot of this uh, is is hitting first? Uh, said how wonderful it is teaching in Lansing with all these pressures. I you know I didn't we didn't talk about that but she just said how wonderful it is and it's because we're we just have great people who are dedicated to, to the process and and um, I just want you to you to know that to the community and know that we're going to be uh, be um, presenting to you to make sure that uh, you have the information you need and communication that you need regarding this process so thank you for your patience but that's it for Anybody now else? any questions for Chris if not Mary June with our super, uh, super school business administrator. <laughs> Thank you. Um, my brother's name is John King, but we spell it right. <laughs> Somebody's John King in, in Trumansburg, who is a principal over there, said that to me once because he spells it like the commissioners. Uh -huh. um, I, I just wanted to bring to your attention that before you this evening is the external audit. Um, the audit committee did receive that in full. Um, we were missing one member, Jack Corgill, um, but I did have a copy of it, of the draft of it, shipped to him. Uh, we don't have any major problems. We're in pretty good financial shape, all things considered. We're, we're holding our own these last few years with the reductions in value that we've been suffering with our largest taxpayer. Um, uh, we will continue uh, to the best of our ability in that direction, I'm sure, uh, with your help. But um, if you have any questions on any of the findings in the audit, uh, I'd be happy to uh, discuss them with you, or I'm sure that the, the members of the committee might be able to discuss them with you, but if you feel more comfortable coming to me, that's fine, because uh, I'll have background and detail. We really don't have any significant deficiencies or the, the audits are just incredibly cleaned up. Uh, we, we continuously have, uh, with the extra class audit, um, delay in getting monies deposited and I think that's part of the nature of the beast. We're doing everything we can to speed that process all the time. Uh, but the reality is that if you have a fundraiser on a Friday night, they're not going to get deposited probably until Tuesday or Wednesday because the student treasurer has to come in and deal with it and all of that. Um, but we do have the new night deposit dro drop box. 
up in the district office there where they were working on that today it's an incredible sound right next to your ear there but um, uh, as soon as they have that done we'll have the the extra class folks using that to the best of our ability on the weekends at least or when when um, the buildings are otherwise closed to them so that we can make sure that everything's secure but if you have any questions just let me know thank you Mary June I know we made tremendous progress and thank a you. lot of you deserve a lot of help from good staff. auditors too and good support district-wide we're we'll all sleep better at night knowing Knowing our books are in good, good condition. Any questions for Mary June? If not, principals' reports. Who would like to go first? We'll go in great order. Hello. We celebrated Fire Prevention Week in the elementary school last week with our annual first grade trip to the fire station and then their trip to our school, visiting our kindergarten classrooms, and then they also did a visit to the Head Start program. It's always an exciting time. Um, everybody has a great time while learning a great deal and always punctuated by the great spout of water that goes through our um, bus circle so it was a great thing and we really appreciate all the volunteer firefighters and all the work they do and they make the extra time and effort to work with the kids and it's really great um, I wanted to let you know that I attended a system of care conference a couple of us did um, sponsored by the collaborative solutions network and Seneca Schuyler and Tompkins County Departments of Mental Health and the Francisca Racker Center on October 2nd where we learned about a system of wraparound services that's um, an integrated community approach to um, address mental health and well-being of children and their families and we saw um, an example of that from um, Wisconsin and are using some of the things that we've learned from that wraparound service program to implement here in Tompkins County so um, it's an innovative program and very grassroots and I'm staying on the committee to work together to develop that they'd really like to involve schools more in that process whereas Wisconsin had a little trouble getting that going and so um, I was happy to see and be part of that and see that they were really um, proud to talk about Tompkins County and um, their involvement with the schools already and so many great things that we have going so I'm excited to join that and I'll keep you updated as more happens with that um, we participated uh, in spirit week there at the elementary school we had a little um, elementary cheer process that we went through there in the um, cafeteria so the kids got to learn we are the Bobcats and a lot of them participated in making a sign that we hung for the football players as they came in at uh, halftime so it was great fun and um, they're looking forward to seeing the cheer again so I just have to you know remind them I'm really not a cheerleader although I did wear my blue and gold and I, I once was a cheerleader but whatever <laughs> We um, had an exciting time for um, kindergarten and Head Start because the Family Reading Partnership gave all of the kids the Love Those Letters books and DVD and CD packages and we had letters while we were building up until the day when they gave the uh, the books out we were counting down the letters of the alphabet all together and um, and then the kids got to take those home on on October 11th so that's always a, a, a nice thing to help build excitement for reading and letters and literacy so we're happy to see that we have community meetings coming up in October our theme is friendship so we're talking a lot about friendship and building friends making friends and um, and keeping them in the elementary school and of course upcoming is our fall parade on the 31st and I'm sure I'll see all of you there good evening um, just to piggyback on what Christine had to say we I like to commend our students many of which are sitting behind me for a wonderful spirit week uh, five days of activities a lot of school spirit the pep rally was highly successful and then of course the introduction of the powder puff football game coached by some of our best correct uh, and after that the SEO put on a, a kind of carnival to bring families out there was a bounce house face painting all of that which was brand new this year and really made it into a community event I don't know if those of you who were there the night of the football game I, I think you felt it and saw it and it was really a terrific evening for all of us so thanks to our students and our staff for getting that together uh, one of the things that I wanted to, to say that 
that I'm proud of our government students and our classes for working with the Townsend County uh, Planning Department. They had uh, folks in today into Ms. Ivory's class um, after a, a solicitation, hey, do you want us to come out and talk to your students? The Tompkins County Planning Department is looking at their comprehensive plan, which was done originally in 2004 and now needs to be updated in 2014. And they're committed to getting input from young people. So they designed a survey, and Ms. Ivory opened up her doors, had them come in to really explain what is a comprehensive plan and why is it important in the lives of our students because the plan will... Um, it, it's a 10-year process, and so many of our seniors will, in fact, be community members um, at that time. So they were able to take the survey and, and get that input um, today. So we'll see and follow what the county is doing with that. Lastly, I've been working with uh, the BOCES principals. Uh, Ms. Pettigrasso talked about the Common Core Learning Standards and we meet monthly. Our meeting this past month was all about the Common Core Learning Standards, some changes in the testing, and uh, really collaborating about what our understanding is, where are we going, and sharing best practices. And, and that feels real good. Thanks. Thank you, and uh, good evening, everyone. Um, the middle school is continuing to do well. I'm very, very impressed by all of the teachers' efforts and um, the student behavior and the spirit in the school, um, I'm very, very pleased. Um, we have a number of things coming up, um, the first of which would be the opening of the parent portal for the, for the school tool website um, tomorrow. It was supposed to happen today, but I uh, was having trouble with passwords, so we will get that up and going. Parents will be able to view teachers' electronic grade books and check on their students' grades, and I think this would be um, a, a real positive step forward for them. We have a dance coming up on Friday the 25th for our 7th and 8th graders and for 5th and 6th graders it will be an activity night at the high school in the gym and in the pool and if you're a 5th grade parent and you're not familiar with the process please um, check our website and call school if you need some pointers. It'll be from 7 tonight till 9 that evening. Um, our production of Once on this Island, the middle school musical will be on November 6th through the 9th. And just watching the kids practice is unbelievable. There's 120 students, it looks like, at least <laughs> 120, on the stage practicing dance steps. And um, it's just tremendous. Lucas Hibbard um, is leading that effort. And it's wonderful. I just really enjoy getting down there whenever I can to see them. We've had student council elections. And students um, presented to their classmates and went through the the whole process and are now up and running and meeting regularly, helping us to make middle school decisions. And finally, um, last Wednesday, October 9th, we had a spirited discussion of the Common Core curriculum um, with probably about 60 people in the auditorium in the middle school. And the main objective there, it was mostly about math. That's where much of the stress for everyone seems to be. Um, and I think that um, it was informative, and it's, it's difficult. These are difficult topics, and I think Chris said it very well, where the objective should be for us to come together and support our students as well as we possibly can. And um, we've had meetings in the school, especially with math teachers, and we've come together as a department to say that, first and foremost, our students' emotional health is number one, and delivering the curriculum we need to deliver is critical, but not at the expense of health and safety and well-being. And so we are going to be reasonable, and we are going to make sure that we're delivering things in, in, a, in a positive way for everyone. So that's our pledge, and I'm very proud of my teachers, of our teachers, for, for coming together on that. So the middle school is doing well. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Okay, in the Department of Special Services, I'll give you some little tidbits of what has been going on in the last month. Um, one tidbit I want to share with you is we have a student in middle school who actually stood up during the school day for the first time in his life and moves around our building with almost eye contact and, um, and is like talking louder as I read more about the standard that he's in now. It's like, going to make him talk more. Eye gaze is going to be better. So that's all really great success and walking down Lansing Middle School hallway and his, his equipment, which is wonderful. 
Um, as far as professional learning communities, we have two professionals from our high school in U.S. history participating in the inclusive education professional learning community at BOCES. Um, and it's been some pretty powerful changes we're seeing in that um, design and curriculum, so I, I'm impressed with that. Um, the little piece of Common Core I'm going to bring today, uh, math does seem to be the discussion at my table usually these days, um, but the GED will also be changing, so we have the um, general education uh, um, adult equivalen equivalency exam. Now what we're calling it is um, we're looking for um, test assec assessing secondary curriculum. So in January this year, what they're going to be doing is the GED is going to be more closely aligned with the Common Core. But they're going to give us two years for the Common Core to really to give us two years to catch up with that. So even GED, that exam is aligning now with the Common Core. So it's going to be the first round this January. And then by 2016, they're hoping, hoping that the, uh, the alignment with the Common Core is going to be stronger. Um, as far as paraeducators, um, this past Friday we had a professional development day with Les Loomis and Focus and Smoker and all that good stuff with Common Core. Um, and our paraeducators revisited um, testing accommodations and the delivery of accommodations as well as an opportunity to join um, in a wellness group that Ms. King put together. For, um, so they had an option of two things to go to. So it was a good day. And the very last one is we are in charge of the incarcerated youth. Um, the jails in our district, and um, we refurbished three um, computers last week from my department and delivered them to the jail, and they're so happy and appreciative because they can word process now and have access to the outside world, which is really great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions for anybody? teaching the curriculum that's been developed and that's on Engage New York. And that what I'm hearing from teachers is that the message from our instructional leaders is that our teachers are um, using whatever methods that they know, true and tested methods, in combination with these new mm -hmm. um, strategies in the Common Core to meet these standards and help our kids succeed. And I think if we can figure out a way to communicate this in simple terms to our parents, it would be help, very helpful. Because I think we're still a little anxious as to what do we do to help our kids at home. And that's just to, to clarify, so since the standards came out, uh, New York State is slowly producing uh, a I'm not going to call it a curriculum because it's not a cur cur curriculum, but a, a guide or a, a something similar to a curriculum to, that would go along with the standards. Um, typically, if we adopt any type of program or curriculum, we go through a pretty uh, thorough process to evaluate it. One of the components uh, uh, lacking is p uh, family support. For, for this. So, in, uh, especially at the elementary school where teachers, I, I'm, I'm sure at the middle school too, where, where families were used to getting, you know, this is what, use this book, and this book will tell you what this, what a partial quotient is, or, you know, and, and now you just kind of get it. You just kind of get it. And, and it's difficult to, to uh, teach when you don't know what you're teaching. So, that's really a key thing that's missing from what the state has provided. And um, they're not providing teachers time. So they're learning the lesson as they teach a lesson because that's how it's being pushed out. I don't, as I talked to the math department th this past Friday, we had a great conversation. They're actually really uh, liking the uh, modules at the state. They're feeling that's really lifted the level of critical thinking. They're just trying to um, find a way to support families and to support the gaps that are missing uh, for, the, for the, our students. And uh, without it, detrimenting the particular students right now. We don't want to lose students as we push these standards on. So, uh, so you'll see a lot of resources being sent home. One of the charges that we're hoping to bring to um, 
what's called Math Coaches Network, which is a regional, all of our regional schools in our BOCES get together and people that are really focused on math. One of the charges that we would like to ask them to take on is to create resources for families that go along with the modules because the state has said that they are not producing uh, parent resources that go along with it. There are great uh, resources for families on Engage New York, and I encourage all, encourage all families to go there to check it out. Uh, but that means you need to have web access and you need to be relatively savvy with how to manipulate that website. So there are some limitations to that. But we are in the process of also reviewing them so we can determine what resources are the best to print off and provide to families. It's just going to take time. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. I, a good, great conversation with Jen Kedlicic, you know, is that she has just enough time to prepare to teach her kids. You know, and then there's not enough time left to then teach the parents, too. So whatever we as parents can do to help parents helping parents, um, know that we're on board to do that. Thank you. Oh, yes. Um, to add to the, with the principals, uh, Mr. Thomas, with the middle school, is there, do you guys have any type of spirit? I know the elementary school and the high school have talked about having sort of like a spirit week as well. Um, we did actually. Um, Miss Crop is uh, one of our in, in charge of spirit at the middle school, and we um, we've had a number of dress up days. We were in our blue and gold the other day, and um, we we do. I didn't mention it in my comments, but we we absolutely do. And in fact, I would say the seventh grade team that Miss Crop is on um, leads the way in terms of. Uh, uh, we've got, we dress up for Pirate Day, we dress up for Spirit Day. Uh, yeah, it's, it's so, there's a lot going on in terms of that. I, I would, honestly, I would like to answer your question, I would really like us to connect with the high school more in the future as far as your Spirit Week. Um, we, we, we know, we do, but it could be much better, so. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Welcome. Uh, next on the agenda, we have our Board of Education reports. We've had a busy few weeks as a board. I know we have a lot to talk about. Um, do we want to go around the table, or how would you like to? Karen, do you want to mention what you're working on? Sure. Um, I am working on a one-page summary. Oh, oh sorry. Um, so I've been officially a board member for two months, and I'll hit my three-month mark um, in early November. And um, it's down south, we'd say it's been baptism by fire. <laughs> and it's been great. And I'm just very honored and privileged to be a part of this board and to work with um, a very gifted superintendent. Um, so in the last two months, um, I've attended the training. And just for, for you to know, um, if you're possibly going to be a future board member or thinking about it, by New York State law, um, Elected school board members are required to attend six hours of uh, school board governance training as well as six hours of fiscal responsibility training. And um, our district is very supportive of professional training and development for board members so we can be as effective as we possibly can. So I was encouraged to go to Albany and I did that and it was phenomenal. Um, not only what I learned in our sessions but also the people that I met across the you know, New York State who attended. Um, so I am now um, working on a one-page summary to share with my board members um, what I learned and what um, initiatives I would like to, uh, for us as a board to discuss on how we can provide strategic leadership, partnering with Chris and the community um, to take our district from being great to excellent. So that's what I'm working on. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Aziza, do you want to mention your work sure. on the board protocol? And I have copies for people. Okay. So we had a board retreat, and we talked about some of the things that we want to do as board, and and um, the goal, the um, board education responsibilities, and what our legacy is, I guess. Um, and so one of the things I worked on was the board protocols. Um, and this is basically talks about the quorum of um, the board and how will we treat each other and how we're going to carry out business. And it's, it's nice to do so um, we're all on the same page and we agree how we're going to operate. Um, so it, 
we have any questions about a process amongst ourselves and it's about respect and how we expect the meetings to go and how basically how we were interacting with each other. So it's very good. And so the only change that um, we adopted, we used someone else's work. I don't know where this came from. Do you know where the original one came from? It came from a board retreat a couple, three years ago maybe. I'm not sure who the original author, but it came through New York State. I think School it's board part of the NISBA template. Is it? I mm. think so. Okay. So we, we, we talked about it at the retreat and we discussed um, how we felt about it and how we wanted to proceed. And so these past two weeks, we were supposed to give any um, further feedback to it so we can adopt this. And we only had one change. Um, one suggestion was to change in number 12, the last sentence, the board president is a spokesperson for the board instead of the spokesman for the board. So I think uh, we've already agreed on this. So I don't know if we can put it on the agenda tonight, but I would suggest that we um, adopt it. Unless it's more Yeah, changes. how's the rest of the board feeling? I think at the retreat, we felt pretty good about this. I, I know Tom felt good about this. I'd kind of like us to officially put it on the agenda and adopt it, just so it's a record and everything. Right. People feel okay about that? Sure. So maybe so. we can add that as an action item later on tonight. Mm -hmm. Just get something ticked off our list. Okay. So maybe we'll... Well, ask for a motion, but we'll put this, um, we'll get to action items, we'll add this okay. at the end. Okay, very good. Anything else, Aziza? Nope, good okay, retreat. Good. A lot of good work came out of it. So. Yeah, I thought it was a really good retreat. We had a retreat, I don't know, was it October 1st? Yeah, I think so. Uh, led by John Carroll from New York State School Board Association. We had 100% attendance by the board, and our public came. Ted was there for most mm -hmm. of it. And I thought we had some good discussions. We were there four plus hours and covered a lot of ground and I think it was very beneficial. Um, we talked about operating protocols, we talked about board goals, and we talked about uh, superintendent evaluation. So I think it was helpful to all of us. Christine, do you have any? No, I'll defer to Julie and you. Okay. Julie, just anything policy. to add? We just have policy. Yeah, we, policy, we've already met and talked. We're going to go over some first readings of policies tonight. Okay. Well, I have a couple things. Um, first, I'd like to mention we had a facilities committee meeting a week ago, two weeks ago. And really, the focus was on our upcoming septic system project. We had uh, architects and engineers there uh, from Tetratech. And we talked about the project. What we'd like to do is have our next capital project really just focused on the septic system due to the dire condition of it. And we laid out a timeline and a process just to follow that, including one of the items on the agenda is to get a survey done of our property. We got a couple quotations from surveyors. We selected one based on cost, timing, and technical merits, I guess. And that's on our agenda to approve. There is some urgency to get that done uh, because they want to do the survey before winter really sets in when it's hard to identify wetlands because everything's frozen and before we have snow on the ground, which makes it pretty hard to survey. Um, so that's on the agenda to do. Our timeline, if everything goes well, is still you know, a couple years out, not this summer, but the following summer, I think, 2015. So the way it works with the approvals needed and there is a pretty uh, strict protocol on what's allowed and the health department and department of en environmental conservation all these people need to sign off on mm -hmm. what we need to do we are looking at looks like three septic systems mm -hmm. um, and they have to be in a location different than they are today so we got to develop a plan so we don't disrupt uh, the playing fields and those type of things we don't want another swimming pool situation if we can avoid it so we're we're working on that anything to add yes yeah we're hoping to get our ducks in a row so when we have the vote for the the open board seats and the school budget we will have another item on there for just a a septic system project we need to come up with a yeah, some, some snazzier name <laughs> <for> that, <laughs> the we're leadership ready. team had a few at the last <laughs> <one>. <laughs> I just yeah. have a, um, a concern about we still don't know the certain future of the power plant. So what's our plan B if we cannot, if we shouldn't expect to fund a complete overall of the septic system? What is our plan B? I mean, well, can you start talking about like 
okay, we have no money, we won't get money, what is going to be the plan B to help us get well, through Well, we that? asked about that because we also need to have a plan B because, you know, our septic systems have been on the verge of failure for a couple years now, and <laughs> if it fails before we get a project approved, what do we do? So that's really been our plan B discussion. Um, and, and that would be to jerry-rig something or bring in pumping stations to pump it out because you can't operate a school without a septic system. And the cost of that was pretty exponential from the conversation, the cost to have it pumped out on a daily basis. I don't even know what, I mean, we have cost to that now, but uh, it was, it would, it, be, it would get up there quickly. So, but as far as, you know, I think this is one of the things we, we got to do regardless of the power plant. I mean, you can't have a school without a septic system. You can't jerry-rig something. There's some pretty strict guidelines on what's safe and appropriate for the environment. We can't. In other areas, I don't yeah. think we have an option but to hopefully we'll make sure, you know we'll inform the public. We've been informing the public as we've talked about the sewer. Uh -huh. We've you know, been sharing that information. To, um, so hopefully we will be able to do this. Uh, financially, if there's difficulty, there would have to be reductions elsewhere. Okay. And this is a separate vote, right? Separate than the school budget. It's a separate capital project, and hopefully people understand the need for. This is pretty basic facility, I think, for any. I, I mean, I understand that. I just, yeah. you know, like, if, if the power plant goes away and we have this big capital pro project that we're going to ask the public to fund, just thinking about that compounding cost and how are we going to, you know, how is that going to really affect the public? Yeah. And I know, I understand that school can't run, but still, you know, just make sure we have a plan B and we're always talking about that. And so the public knows that we are thinking about yeah. and have that in consideration. Abs absolutely. So that's we're why always I always bring that up. Always got to be conscious of cost. You know, one good piece of news is we have a, a major capital project that is being paid off in 2017. So we have a big mortgage payment that goes away of about a million dollars a year. So if we can survive until then, and the capital project would be about pretty close to the same time, right? Maybe a little bit in advance. There will be some offset um, to cover some of those costs. So. Um, what else have we been doing? We do have an upcoming New York State School Board annual meeting, the 24th, 25th, and 26th. I know a number of board members are going. It's always a great event. I always, I'm not able to go this year due to work commitments, but whenever I go, I always come back much like you did, Karen, out of Albany with a ton of ideas and drive the superintendent and other people nuts with all their <laughs> <laughs> ideas. But it is a, a great, great event, and thank you, everybody, for who can take making the time to go. It's always energizing. Um, on our retreat, I had a couple of takeaways which I worked on. One was we had talked about during our meeting board goals and what they are, and we had talked about um, some things and I reflected after the meeting and put them in a, in a form of really board goals and wrote them down and then our friend John Carroll sent us an example board goals and I was pleasantly pleased how well they aligned with the goals that we had come up independently. So I, I had shared this with folks. I had a little bit of feedback from Karen on the number one to broaden it. Um, the professional development to go beyond just the board retreat, but I guess I'd like to have us think about, so these be our board goals for this year, and at least. Yeah, I thank you for doing this. I really appreciate all of this. Just one little comment that I wanted to make on number two. It talks okay. about complete an annual review of the superintendent, yep. and based on some of the formation of a superintendent evaluation tool, maybe it should be biannual because it's, you know, formative and summative, but I don't know if we needed to put biannual in there or not, mm -hmm. just to make sure that we are doing, you know, we're doing the formative and not just doing the summative. Yep, yep. Okay. You know, I think my thought was it's only one review, but it's kind of a review process. Yes. And in there we talk about um, an evaluation uh, instrument and process, and that's the second part of my my homeworks was to um, come up with 
uh, New York State School Board Association had given us a, a bunch of sample uh, procedures for board operating procedures, and I took one on superintendent um, evaluation and really didn't tweak it much at all. The only thing I did was open it up for a little bit of flexibility. Um, and you asked if I could highlight the changes. I didn't get around to doing that. But um, in the sample, there was um, some dates and things that had a little superscript that said board can adjust this as needed. And what I did was open things up to allow a little, a little bit of flexibility. So um, that was the other part of this. Um, we also worked with Chris on evaluation instruments. I think we're going to talk a little bit about that later. So this is the right, uh, sorry, the evaluation procedure. Right, that supports the instrument. And I think there's probably a little bit of adjustment to make sure they're totally aligned. Mm -hmm. But you know, what we had talked about in the retreat is we need an instrument, but it's also a best practice to have it written down for the school board what we're going to do so we, when we bring new people on, we understand what we're doing. I thought was that we're kind of starting to create a, a protocol book. You know, that would be yep. A protocol. And I do have all those electronically from New York State School Board Association, which was a, a great help. It's a lot easier to edit something than to create from scratch. Um, so I guess in summing it up, on board goals, um, do people feel we're ready to adopt these or we need more discussion on these as well? I think we can adopt them and go on, <laughs> keep, you know, uh, change them as we see fit. Do we have a timeline now? Did we put them in the timeline? Mm -hmm. uh, the ti well, the board goals, uh, the timeline is in the instrument and in the procedure. Uh, timeline for the for goals, board? like goals. being like oh, a three-year? No. no. I think it's in tip, you know, you could, we could do it multi-year or you could just do it annually, adjust them annually. Uh, if you meet them, change them or... But typically, they're continuous goals. But if, if you, I would think if you become consistent with the annual review, it doesn't really need to become a goal. It can just become part of your process. So I would do them annually for now. Okay. And that way. And let's put them on our action list. They, that way you can, they can be adjusted and yeah, reviewed. We talked about putting these on our um, upcoming meeting agendas. That's like like we did with uh, policies. And it took, I know you took a lot of effort and you guys to go through it, but now we have a policy book and now it's a, more of a maintenance and updating mm -hmm. exercise. I think this will always be like this. I will talk a little bit how they're all connected, how these goals that Glenn uh, worked on here are connected to my personal superintendent goals, not really the evaluative goals, as well as the district goals. And so I'll, I'll talk a little bit to that. And okay. they are. They are very connected. So I guess I haven't really had a chance to read the superintendent evaluation procedure, but I guess I would just, my first suggestion is just to put procedure yeah. in that title. Yeah. What I, what I would like to do is maybe not have this, I don't think this is ready to be approved. Yeah, it's not it might not coordinate with, with the tool and with what's the in tool, the tool. We got a little bit of refinement. I wanted to share this, so, you know, to get input on it. The goals I'm feeling pretty good about, unless, you know, and I I'm always, a, a, I'm the kind of guy that, Let's, let's put some out there, at least we have something and we can adjust it. Mm -hmm. There's nothing saying that once we have something out there, we can't adjust it any time we feel fit. But Why don't we add them to uh, underneath protocols? Okay. Good. Thank you. That's what I'd like to do. So when we get to that section, we'll amend the agenda and add these things. Okay, I've, so I've spoken enough. Um, any other? I don't know, the, the tool itself, I gave you all a copy. Uh, you have the electronic copy. You have a copy. I gave you a hard copy to look at. Um, the one suggestion that Julia was had was to uh, define more what distinguished is, what, uh, whatever the, the terms are. Um, I just took off ones that I saw to, <laughs> to match it up. And I was trying to go into, uh, you know, find a good definition for distinguished, but it didn't fit. <laughs> Quite well, fit. I was it was trying like, to find some too. yeah, I it's just like, a few, but, I didn't but have we can, uh, to, you know, so to have, so we have a little more clarity on what those definitions are, and then really we just need to match up the dates yep. and things, protocols. But I put it. You have a copy of uh, the communication feedback cycle, which I'll refer to in a little bit. A copy of the tool, and uh, which I forgot to mention. Also, you have the bobcap there for you to, uh, to for your review from, from the high school. So you have a PowerPoint later. 
a presentation mm -hmm. we'll cover on some of this also? Yep. Okay. Yep, so questions. Good. Okay. So a lot going on, a lot of good stuff. I'm feeling good about things. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Any other? Uh, okay. Okay. Thank you. If not, we'll move on to presentations and discussions with our friend Mr. Franklin leading off. Talking about solar tax no, exemption opt-out. Like opt somebody famous. Oh, I can't use so that one. Do we have a presentation or just uh, 